Greetings and salutations, YouTubers. This is ZillaFan85, back today coming at you with my latest video, back to doing some figure reviews. Uh, and for today, definitely one that I was super, super amped up to do, guys, because this is my Bandai 1991 Godzilla. Oh, yeah. And if I sound a little extra excited, that's because of the 91 Godzilla, the 89 slash 91 Godzilla. If you, you know, because they're essentially the same design anyway. Um, that is my all time favorite Godzilla design, as some of you might know if you have seen some of my previous, you know, videos on the subject and what have you. Um, so I was definitely really, really happy to get a hold of this guy. This is a pretty rare figure. Um, you can find them on eBay, uh, you know, but they're obviously a bit a bit in the pricey sort of range. Uh, but it is a really nice figure. It's an older um an older older model I should say uh, so you know the vinyl on it's a bit harder and what have you than some of the more recent releases uh, but still though this is this is just a just an awesome figure in my opinion anyways I was really happy to get a hold of this uh, there are two different versions of this I'm sure you've seen other or you know or possibly you've seen other reviews on this guy uh, because there is the uh, the Bandai Japan version which is the one that I have here so this is the more authentic one uh, but then they also have a um, a Korean version of this as well, and the Korean version is actually really nicely done too, because I've seen you know uh, you know uh, reviews on it and pictures of it and what have you, uh, and it's pretty close to this. Um, like I said, it, it is it is almost on par in my opinion. Uh, I just prefer the more authentic one, the actual you know uh, Bandai Japan version instead of the uh, Korean one. So I wanted to make sure I did get it. Um, a few things that you will uh, notice to to denote the the two apart, you know, which I'll kind of get into, I guess, when I um, when I actually jump into reviewing this guy here. Uh, so pretty much with that, you know, we'll go ahead and jump into it. Like I said, this is this is you know the ninety one suit and the eighty nine suit are essentially the same, but they did make a few tweaks to the ninety one suit, uh, mainly so to make him look more powerful. And obviously, that's because he was made by the well, not only the modern nuclear weapons that you know from the film if you remember from Godzilla versus King Ghidorah in 1991 this you know what this version is based off of the Guido Goji as it's um uh, really, you know, it's the suit is known as the 89 suits called the Bio Goji. So they kind of, like I said, they basically do group it in together, but when they separate it, they call this one in particular the Guido Goji. Uh, so again, though, the, um, you know, the way they kind of retconned uh, the whole storyline that the Futurians in Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah ended up creating the 84 uh, Godzilla uh, when they went back in time to World War II and moved the Godzilla Saurus off you know, off of the, uh, of, of Ragos Island, uh, into the sea, and then he was created by that nuclear submarine that, that was, uh, that had, uh, uh you know, that was there, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly how they explained it, but anyways, a nuclear submarine that was in the area that I guess had sank or whatever back in the 70s, and that created the 84 Godzilla, um, but then when that, when that, nuclear submarine that uh, Mr. Shindo and the Japanese government sent down with, when they thought they were just going to create Godzilla to fight against King Ghidorah ended up giving him a boost in power and increasing his size and so that's kind of where the tweaks to the 91 suit in particular came in uh, and that's why he looks you know a little bit more more powerful I guess you would say he's bigger you know, which that, I mean, I don't know if you can really tell when you watch the film, but you can definitely tell he looks more powerful, uh, which he obviously, you know, is in this version. Um, so, you know, with that, though, let's go ahead and jump into the figure review itself here, folks. Uh, so, like I said, this, in my opinion, and some of the other reviewers that I've seen their videos on it, um, they have all really denoted this is a, a really nicely done figure. You can see, you know, that charcoalish color that Godzilla has all around his body, but you do have some nice silver highlights uh, here, like in the chest area, and also on the ends of the dorsal spines, as you guys can see. 
there kind of going down his body. Uh, and the thing to note here, this is one of the things to note, uh, this, this prominent silver that you can see on the chest as well as the, uh, the, the spiky points on the spines. Um, that's, that's one of the keys to noting uh, the difference between the Japanese version and the Korean version because the Korean versions, uh, the silver is sort of there but it's, it's a more dulled out version. It's not as uh, um, vibrant and prominent as you would, you know, I guess you would call it as the Japanese version is. Um, and then here looking at the face, you've got the teeth with that sort of yellowish bone colorish for the teeth here. They got some silver for the finger claws and for the toe claws here, as you guys can see. And it looks really, really nice. I really like it here. And it meshes in well with the charcoalish color, so I really like that. Uh, and then, of course, back up on the face here, too, so you guys can try and see that. You can see, like, the sort of orangish uh, color for the eyes. Here, I'm trying to make sure you guys can see that. And as you can see, he's got the black pupils as well, so it's uh, very nicely uh, done there for the eyes. And it does look pretty on par for how he looked in the film, I think. Anyway, uh, and that's another thing, too, with the Korean version. The eyes, the that orangish color is not as, not as bright on the Korean version as it is here on the Japanese version. So that's another cue. And there's... Uh, one other big factor as well, uh, which I'll get to in just a moment. Um, so I think that mostly covers it for the, uh, you know, for the paint job. Obviously, you know, the traditional Godzilla uh, uh, skin tone colors and what have you. So it's it's certainly done well here. Uh, for the detail work, um, this guy, you know, this is where this really shines. He's got almost a, almost a sort of glossy looking, uh, you know texturing down his body and it, it it kind of really highlights his skin I think you know and maybe that's just me but I, but it just seems like it has that sort of uh, tone to it and you can really really see here as long as my camera cooperates uh, Godzilla fan freaks I know how you feel buddy uh, I just was watching your uh, uh, your video on your neck of Rodan from Godzilla King of the Monsters uh, the other day here and uh, yeah so I know how you feel about trying to get the uh, camera to focus um, but anyway though so as long as this guy stays in focus you can you can see the scaling pretty well and they've really really made it so it's nice and textured feeling all if you rub the skin at any point of, of uh, Godzilla's body, you can really feel it. You can see the um, the segmentations on the tails very prominently done on this guy. Uh, really looks good, you know. And really, uh, they really paid attention to detail here. You've got all the bumps and everything on his legs, you know, that uh, kind of show his um, his thick legs that he's got, and very powerful looking. Uh, just as you can see, that sort of um, that sort of almost muscular tone that he's got to his chest and whatnot as well, uh, which again adds to the power that this. Uh, that this Godzilla really, really showcases. At least I think so as well. That's why, really, if I was gonna, you know, you know, really, really pick one Godzilla suit in particular, this would be the the one, hands down. I I really, really love this Godzilla suit more than more than any. This is always what I think when I think Godzilla. Um, Anyway, so so again, you can you can see the te the detail work in the face here, the teeth and everything. There's there's no like uh, open space in the teeth. You know, this is basically the closed mouth version, or at least I believe it is anyway. But there's no sort of different paint scheme or n no sort of gap on the uh, mouth anyway. So you really, just got the. Uh, the uh, teeth that are uh, that are you know sculpted well in with the paint job anyway so um, but it looks good it definitely gets the job done like I said I really like the way that they did the eyes they really really capture the look of uh, the 91 Godzilla I think so anyways all that detail work on the face the nostrils and everything the scaling the rivets on his head oh just gorgeous you got the uh, the little pointy ears that he's got on both sides of his head is it's just really 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 cool looking at least I think so anyway um, and then like I said then you've got the uh, the finger and toe claws which are very nicely done uh, have a fairly sharp feel about them as well I think so um, 
sculpted very nicely in my opinion. Uh, the spines going down his body very nicely detailed as you guys can see there. The bigger ones on his back and then of course how they get smaller down his tail. Oh man, I really really love this a lot. <laughs> Again, see his underside here, and, and then this too leads into what I was getting at as the major um, difference, you know, uh, how you tell how you tell the Bandai Japan version apart from the Korean version. Just very simply here in the logoing, as long as uh, my camera is cooperating somewhat, but you can see though where it says Bandai 1991, obviously the release, and the 91 Godzilla, of course, and it says Japan on there. Uh, and then, of course, you got the Japanese text on the other uh, foot here on the bottom. But this is the main thing, though, that you know, obviously, um, the text here. So, because the other one, I believe it does say Bandai, but it says Made in Korea underneath it. So, that's how you know. But this one is Bandai Japan, as you guys can see. So, that's how you know this is the uh, the true blue one. Uh, and the Korean one, like I said, looks nice, but I do prefer the Japan, the Bandai Japan one, of course, the Japanese one, uh, and it's to me more authentic anyway. So uh, that's just my opinion, but uh, but that's that's what I aim for. Um, so that about covers it. We did paint in detail. The only other thing I want to really look at here is um, is articulation if there is any you know stuff that I usually cover in my reviews uh, there are some points of articulation but again this is an older figure the vinyls very tough he doesn't articulate very well he does have some points but they don't articulate well the head can uh, sort of swivel left and right like that so you can move the head left and right like I said but it only goes at least on mine anyways the joints are very stiff some of the others that you may come across the joints may be looser but on mine that's really it I'm not gonna try to like go all the way around some people have said that the head can do a 360 but I'm not gonna mess with that um, the arms this arm has a nice little swivel on it as you can see you know, you're not going to get full range of motion, but he can go a pretty nice ways around there. I'm not going to do it too much because I really don't want anything, you know, popping out of place or breaking. This arm, though, it's very tight. It does have articulation, as you can see, but it's very tight. So you just, for mine anyways, it's a small little swivel. Others, again, might be different. So, you know, don't forget I got this used. I got it on eBay, of course. Got it used. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh... And then, of course, the legs. These have a bitter, a bitter, a bit of a better range of uh, articulation, I think. The way you can move them forward and back like that, almost like a walking motion. Um, so it's not too bad. Definitely gets the job done. The tail has, I guess this is like a couple glue seals. This one here in the middle, in the center of the tail. Which, uh, obviously, um, if you guys follow along, you know I don't mess with glue seals. This one, too, I think was a glue seal, but... It's kind of uh, come undone, the glue seal part of it anyway. And unfortunately, too, as you can see on mine, it doesn't sit flush, as you can see, against uh, the, the main part of his body here. Um, and I, you know, if I do pop it in, it just sort of stays like this. It doesn't really stay popped in. So, um, but I guess it's okay as long as it doesn't come out of place. I don't really mess with swiveling the tail too much because I don't really think it's meant for it on this guy too much. Um, but that about covers it for articulation. So it's kind of basic articulation, uh, but it's not bad. It, you know, it definitely gets the job done. Um, you know, but again, it is, it is what it is though, folks. Uh, and I, I just happen to really like the figure anyway, so, uh, you know, the, um, the sort of minimal articulation, you know, it's not, not too bad, though, you know, so, this is really his signature pose that you see him in in the movie anyway, he really looks like he's ready for battle here, so I really, really like it, uh, just as is, so, but nonetheless, though, that about covers it, um, you know, for sizing, which I don't really mess with. This guy is in the 8-inch range, so he's not going to scale in with any 6-inch figures if you're looking for that. You know, if you got the 6-inch King Ghidorah, which I do have and I'll review in the future, as, as well as the 6-inch uh, Mecha Ghidorah, you know, both, both the Bandai versions, um, they, they look small <laughs> next to him, so you know that's not right. Uh, but this is how this guy comes. There's also, I believe, a 50 15 inch version of him so um yeah that one that one's pretty big but i wanted the eight inch version i i 
not really into the gigantic, uh, you know, figures, but, um, you know, if you are, more power to you. I just kind of prefer the more standard range figures. I like six inch figures better, but again, this one came in the eight inch scale. So, you know, it's cool though. Um, but I love it nonetheless. I think, I think Bandai did an did an awesome, awesome job with this figure. Uh, again, this is pretty rare. You can find them on eBay. Um, hopefully the sellers are being honest there and letting you know if it's the Bandai Japan version or the Korean version. Um, I believe when I got this one, uh, I did luck out that the seller, you know, did make sure to denote that this was the uh, Japanese version of the uh, of the 91 Godzilla. Again, the one that I wanted. Um, but either way, though, uh, since both versions are pretty rare, they're not very cheap. You're probably going to look somewhere in between the fifty to one hundred dollar range, between fifty and hundred dollars. I think I paid around. I think I paid maybe around sixty or seventy. Um, I I'm thinking, trying to think back, uh, but I believe that's kind of around what I paid for this guy. Um, but nonetheless, it's a great figure. Again, ninety one Godzilla, my personal favorite version of Godzilla. I really, really wanted to add this to, to my collection. I love it, and I love having it out on display. Um, so I definitely do recommend it, folks, if you are looking in, uh, into this one. Uh, but I believe that about covers it for uh, today's video, though. I would definitely um, like to thank you so much for watching. If you would like to subscribe, please feel free to do so. If you would like to like in or comment on any of my videos, please feel free to do so as well. And just remember, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, you be good to yourselves, and sayonara.